service. And uh, we have Deputy Winder, who is a full-time deputy that performs uh, patrol duties on all waterways in Calhoun County, as well as four other deputies that are part-time employees. So we have uh, a total of five that are working the waterways all summer long uh, to keep people safe. Our bottom line is safety on the waterways. We want people to go out and enjoy the wonderful lakes we have here, but we want them to do it safely. What's the number one thing you see out there that folks should know about to avoid? Just being safe before they go on the water. Um, a lot of times you'll see families just kind of send youngsters out on jet skis and boats, and they don't really prepare themselves. Um, we offer the boater safety class for free through Calhoun County, so we do recommend that. Um, refresher courses are available online as well, but just know your equipment before you get in the water and uh, have the proper equipment. Um, life jacket, make sure it fits correctly. Make sure you have the amount of life jacket you're supposed to have on the boat before you go out, uh, things of that nature. What is that amount? On the boat? Yeah. Um, one per person, depending on the size of the boat, but usually one per person, and then make sure it fits. Again, you don't want an adult um, holding up a small life jacket and saying, no, this is going to be for me. Right. You know, it should fit properly. So if, if that's all you had and an adult is, I don't know, holding onto that against their chest or something, is that going to hold them up? Not potentially, no. Yeah. We don't recommend that at all. Right. In that case, if they live on the lake, we'd say maybe, you know, can you go home and swap out a life jacket, or if we have them, we'll give them one to use. Okay. This is fairly common, Sheriff? Well, you know, we've had, uh, I believe it's three drownings here in Calhoun County over yep. the last 10 years. Uh, the common denominator in all those is life jackets were not being used. Okay. Um we see it quite often where uh, somebody will be struggling swimming in the water and somebody jumps in to, to save them. However, they jump in without a life jacket on. And oftentimes uh, it, it's a family member and a lot of times they're not real strong swimmers, but they want to save that family member. Mm -hmm. If they take a second to at least grab that life jacket, put it on, and then jump in and help help that person struggling. We'll talk more about that in just a minute. On We're with the Sheriff, Matt Saxton, and Marine Patrol Deputy Dave Winder. We're talking about boating safety. And you've made uh, a point that was illustrated by what went on, for example, on Gull Lake this weekend. Someone was struggling. Another person jumped in uh, in an attempt to save them. And I don't think you're saying don't do that, but... Um, in the heat of the moment, it's easy to just jump in without thinking about yourself in that situation. Absolutely. Um, the key here is don't make two victims out of one. Um, if you have the chance, throw on another life jacket, throw an inflatable in the water, um, a throwable, excuse me, throwable in the water, something they can grab onto. Because if you jump in without a life jacket on, they're tempted to grab a hold of you and kind of use you as a life jacket. pull you down. And then, yeah, you have two victims rather than one. Jeez. Right, because uh, that person who is struggling is very often panicking, aren't they? Try yeah, exactly right, Richard. Uh, when somebody is struggling in the water, uh, they're in a panic mode, and oftentimes when the rescuer gets up to them, it's first thing they do is grab onto the nearest thing, mm -hmm. uh, and then it becomes a struggle for both of them. What's your approach to this when when something like that is happening and you're available to help assist how do you usually handle it do you tell that other person don't jump in i'm going in how does this work uh yeah typically um first thing for me is if i have an actual throwable we'll have some kind of lanyard or rope attached to it that way they can grab a hold of it and we can pull them in because mm -hmm. again we're trying to avoid two victims so if i jump in um even with my device that i wear it's going to inflate when i jump in the water but still they're lent they're tempted to maybe pull me down just try to get their their head above water and save themselves so it's a panic survival mode they can't help it but at the same time, we want to try to do as much as we can to get them towards the boat without having two people in the water if we can. You talked about uh, uh, water, a marine craft, and, and, I don't know, tubing and things like that. Sometimes when that's going on, the person who may need help is far away from you. Is that a concern? Uh, yes, oft oftentimes on the uh, waterways, uh, depending on... Uh, what activity you're doing, but if you're tubing or skiing behind the boat uh, and the subject being pulled falls off, 
um, the tow vehicle is quite a ways away. Yeah, it's going to take and some especially time. Especially on a lake like Gogwak or Duck Lake here in Calhoun County that are busy on the weekends. Mm -hmm. uh, boaters need to pay attention to for people or items in the waterway while they're uh, boating on the very busy lakes. Mm -hmm. You talked about the boating safety course. What do folks come away with after they've gone through that? Is uh, is this just about how to handle your watercraft, or is it more than that? Uh, yeah, we give them life examples. Um, Deputy Charlie Fisher that works with me, he, uh, he has a lot of experience on the water, so he is prime examples and stories of life lessons he's learned the hard way, you know, maybe such as putting your plug in the boat. Um, but kids hear that kind of stuff like, okay, it actually happens to people in real life. You know, mm -hmm. they come away with knowing this what this is what could happen, this is how to avoid it. So, you know, we try to help them out in all aspects of boating and safety. Is I'm sorry, in, go ahead. And the boater safety class uh, is not only a, a need for people uh, to get the safety lessons, but it's also required to operate a boat or a jet ski uh, if you're born after 1978, uh, you must have taken a and passed a certified uh, boat safety class mm. through the state of Michigan. Okay. How come 1978? What's the magic with that number? That's when the law was put in place I and see. the age. Uh, the law wasn't passed then, but they went back to a certain age limit. Uh, and jet skis are a little bit different than uh, a motorboat. Uh, I believe it's 12 years of age to uh, drive a motorboat uh, under six horsepower. Correct. I see. Uh, but a jet ski, you you must be 14 years of age. Uh, if you're 14 and 15, uh, you can drive a jet ski as long as you've passed the boater safety class and you have a, an adult supervision with you uh, when driving that jet ski. We presume. 16 and up. Yeah. Uh, as long as you have the boater safety class. We presume that the jet ski thing is a special animal because it handles differently than a boat, doesn't it? I mean, yeah. you're basically. It's basically the motorcycle on an or the water. Yeah. Um, they're dangerous. Um, people don't understand that they're fast, real fast. And yeah. then when you let off the throttle, you actually lose steering. So when you're giving it gas, you can steer. When you let go, there's no more steering. So people come mm -hmm. into the dock or shore. Um, they cut it off thinking, I'm going too fast, and then they lose steering, and then you have an accident. So Yikes. people don't, like I said, they don't jump on these things knowing what to do. They, they jump on thinking, I'm going to have some fun, this is fairly easy, and then they get in trouble when they get on there and, oh, I don't know how to operate this vehicle. It looks easy watching it being done, right. That's the first time I've heard it described that way. That's a good way to describe it, the motorcycle of the water. A jet ski. We'll with talk one, more about that. With one exception, there's no brakes on a jet yeah, ski. Yeah, that's true. There's a little difference there. <laughs> we'll talk more about that in just a minute. About voter safety with Sheriff Matt Saxton and Marine Patrol Deputy Dave Winder today. Uh, you talked about the voter safety course and jet skis and things of that nature. Uh, you have to prove you've taken that course, right? Exactly. Um, if we stop you on a jet ski, um, we'll ask you for your voter safety card. And then the common answer is, oh, I don't have it or I've never taken it before. You have to have it. You have to show proof that you have it when you're on a jet ski. Those things get going, don't they? Uh, a friend who has one, I think he said you can get up to 70 miles an hour on those things. And that's a main selling point from uh, these dealerships is, Heck yeah. you know, this jet ski will go 75, 80 miles per hour. Well, most people don't know it, but there is a speed limit on most lakes in Michigan, which is 55. So okay. they're selling these machines that exceed the speed limit right off the bat. Yep, and uh, it's like buying a car, I guess. <laughs> Same yeah, kind of exactly. thing. So that that course, you get the card, and you ha you should be carrying that card with you because you could be asked to display that at any time. Exactly. All right. How long does that course last? Um, seven hours. Okay, so it's a one-day one thing. Okay, mm -hmm. very good. One thing, you know, we haven't talked about is uh, alcohol and uh, operating marine equipment. This is like drunk driving, isn't it? Yes, Richard. Uh, last year, the legislator uh, changed the legal limit on the waterways to match what the uh, legal limit is on the roadway, and that uh -huh. is .08. Yeah. Uh, but alcohol affects you differently when you're in the sun and on the on the water. Uh, mm -hmm. So we we just ask people to use caution. Again, at the end of the day, the number one thing for our marine patrol units is safety on the waterways 
Uh, we're not out there to write the tickets. We want to make sure folks are enjoying the lakes, doing it safely, and not just in their boat, but doing things safe in their boat so the other boats are safe on the waterways. Mm -hmm. and that's an interesting point. Um, and very often we go out on the water to have a party, and alcohol is involved. So in that case, the captain of the ship, so to speak, has to be mindful of their intake. Exactly right. Uh, any anytime uh, you're operating a piece of machinery, whether it's on the roadway or on the waterway, uh, you can't be intoxicated in doing that. So, mm -hmm. uh, it is a set at point zero eight, uh, and you know we we get one or two drunk boaters a year, uh, not a lot of them, uh, but. Uh, we're out there uh, to make sure everybody is being safe. Uh, we will check you out if you do appear to be intoxicated. Mm -hmm. We we will uh, uh, investigate that and make sure you're okay to be on the on the waterway. But our our Marine Patrol deputies are out there for safety. Uh, as as Deputy Winder mentioned, a lot of times they find. Uh, jet ski, young jet ski drivers that haven't been through the course, most often they'll give a verbal warning the first time and say, hey, it's more of an education thing. They teach them what they need to have. Uh, and all, all five of the depths that are on the waterways have good memories. So if they catch you a <laughs> second time, you're probably going to get the ticket. So I remember you. Yeah. Okay. How often are those courses made available? Uh, early in the summer, we have a lot of classes available. I brought okay. a schedule with me today. Good. Um, we actually don't kick off another class till September, and those will be our hunter safety slash boater safety classes. Oh, okay. Um, I'm sure if we do get enough interest, we could generate another boater safety class um, sometime in the summer. Um, usually, we like 10 or more people to join up for the class. And uh, if we have our pick in it, we like children over 10. Um, they pay attention a little bit stronger and get a better grasp of the, the material. Sure. Okay. But, and as Deputy Winder mentioned, if, if we do have enough interest, we will throw some classes together. Uh, and folks can call our main number at the Sheriff's Office, 781-0880, uh, and we'll keep a list there. And if we get enough folks that uh, are interested and want the class, uh, we'll we'll put one together. 781-0880. Yes. All right. Very yeah. good. The classes are free. And we hold most of them right there at our Murlock building in Marshall, the new building they built off of mm -hmm. 94. So okay. it's convenient and free. All right. Make the call and get your certification of sorts and make sure you have that with you in case you're asked to display it. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you, and enjoy the waterways this summer. All right.